Go. so far with uh, slope intercept form. So if you guys remember, here's our original equation we've talked about, right? We've gone over and over and over and over and over this, remembering that m represents our slope and b represents our y-intercept. So we spent time looking at graphs. And whatever the graph is, we can write the equation, depending on what the y-intercept is and what the slope is, right? And then we took a point, uh, we, we gave you equations in slope intercept form, and I told you to graph it. So you first plotted the y intercept, and then you used the slope to find the next point. That's what we spent the last couple of days going over, right? Okay. So now what I'm going to say is well, what about, I'm going to ask you now to find the slope intercept, or find the y equals mx plus b form of the line if I have the slope and I give you a point now. So there's actually two different ways I want you to do this, all right? Um, so you guys, let's say, you guys know how to graph by now, right? Now you should know that a point and a slope, you guys can all do this in your press. So if you're one of those graphical people and you really like graphing, flip your test over when you guys take your test and graph it. Say, okay, now you have one, two, three, four, one, two, and then my slope is down three over four. So. I can just go down one, two, three, and then over four. One, two, three, four. So it goes down three, one, two, three, over four. So I can say my graph is going to look like this. So you could graph it and find out what the y-intercept is, which would be one, two, three, four, five. Now, that works as long as your y-intercept is an integer. But let's say your y-intercept ends up being like 10 third or you know 10.33. It's going to be difficult to estimate that by graphing it. So we need an algebraic way that we can always solve it. So that's why we started including this equation. Now, we developed this, the point-slope form, when we're given a point of a graph and we're given a slope. So this is the perfect equation to use. Now you might be saying, well, Mr. McLogan, we know a point only has an x and a y. Right? So why are you giving us an x1 and a y1 and an x2 and a y2? Well, the reason why, guys, is because this equation actually comes from our slope formula. Remember the slope formula? y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. So that comes from when you're given two points, which we'll go over later today. So if you're given two points, remember, if you're given like two points, one is x1, y1. The other one is x2, y2, right? So if you're given two points, we label them as x1 and then x2. However, here we only have one x and one y, right? So which one do you plug it in for? Well, it doesn't matter, but here's your tip you might want to write down. It's easiest to just plug these in for x1 and y1. So what I'll do is I'll say y2 minus y1, which is a negative 2, equals m times x2, which is, uh, right, x2, minus a negative 4. Now, since I only have an x and a y, does it really make sense for me to label them x1, y, or x2 and y2? No, we only have one x and one y. So just erase those. All right? The only reason why we do an x1 and a y and an x2 is to distinguish between the x's. So if I plug my x and y in for one of the x's and the one of the y's, the other x and y just become x and y. I don't need to label them as x1 and uh, x1 and y1. So now what I need to do is I need to simplify. y minus a negative 2 is y plus 2 equals m. Okay, well, not m though. What is our m? Our m is a negative 3 fourths, right? And then x minus a negative 4 just becomes x plus 4. Okay? 
So now the next thing I want to do, Justin, as you're writing this down, is you're going to want to use distributive property. So I have y plus 2 equals a negative 3 fourths times x. And then a negative 3 fourths times 4, I'll just do it over here. How do you guys multiply a fraction times a whole number? Change your whole number to a fraction. Multiply across. Right? Or what we could say is, these just cancel out to give you negative 3 over 1, which is equal to negative 3. Either way you want to think about it, your answer is negative 3. Oh, that's actually pot, yeah, it's minus 3. <laughs> then, the last thing we need to do is, remember, I want it in this format, right? So I have a y plus 2. I need to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to subtract the 2 on both sides. So therefore, oops. So therefore, the equation of my line is y equals a negative 3 fourths x minus 5. Now, like I said, that's the same thing as what we got for our graph. If you guys notice, my y-intercept was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the y-intercept is negative 5, and the slope is negative 3 fourths. So that's how you do it algebraically. Okay? So if you guys are given a slope and a point, you guys can use that equation to solve.